On the 8th of December 2015, the day before Ntlantla Nene was fired as finance minister, the bond yield on the R186 was at 8.81%. The news broke and it hit a peak of 10.4% on the 11th of December, just three days later. This is The Moneymakers. I'm Bruce Whitfield. Tonight, we delve into the cost of volatility and uncertainty and what impact that has on the bond market and ultimately, of course, what impact it has on you. There's that nasty Hawks questionnaire to the finance minister, Pravin Gordon, about his time at SARS and whether or not he okayed an investigative unit which is alleged to have started under his watch. Joining me this evening is Tasha Jacobs, who's Investec Corporate and Institutional Banking Executive and joining me via Skype from Cape Town, Rashad Tayob, Portfolio Manager at ABEX Investments. This R186, it's the universal benchmark for the health of the bond market. I mean, that's the, that's the simplest way of putting it, Tisha. I think um, it's basically a 10-year bond and it's the most liquid bond. It's one of, it, in South Africa, it's one of their biggest issuance and therefore investors and traders are very comfortable with it because it's a very deep market. In other words, it's fairly liquid. So a bond yield at 6% suggests that the economy is in pretty good shape and that institutional investors are pretty confident about uh, their returns and therefore they'll accept a lower return. When the bond market spikes up over 10, it suggests a level of less confidence. I think one must also always judge it in terms of where we are in the business cycle. For example, 2013, you know, um, central banks globally were um, embarking on quantitative easing. There was very high demand for um, high yielding bonds such as South African bond yields. The rand was quite strong, inflation was low, there were expectations that the Reserve Bank could cut interest rates and subsequent to that it's been a complete reversal. And I think recent developments then have caused a widening in the risk premium. You need a higher yield to compensate for various risks. Rashad in Cape Town, give me a sense of it please where the bond market, where is the R16 trading at the moment? At the moment, we're trading at around 9.40. Uh, yesterday, we had, have, we had had a significant recovery over the last month, where in early a month and a half, uh, you know, in the middle of January, uh, the risk, the, the 186 moved from 10% towards close to 9%. As we saw an improvement in the sentiments towards the politics, there was a feeling that Praveen Gordon, as finance minister, uh, had delivered a reasonable budget and he was getting around the issues and beginning to reform uh, you know, through some of the issues that South Africa had faced. Um, yesterday we saw a massive, yesterday the yield was sitting at around 9.10. We then saw a sell-off after the Hawks delivered their ultimatum to Pravin Gordon. We saw a significant sell-off within two hours all the way to 9.50. So a 40 basis point sell-off in a very short sp space of time, um, w w which harked back to what the market had experienced on the 12th of December last year. So we've had a significant political risk premium. It had reduced, but yesterday's events shows how tenuous the situation is. And there are very powerful forces which are working against the finance minister. And the fight is not over yet, which means that you're going to have a significant political risk premium in the market uh, going forward. Now, Tisha, is there a correlation between the behavior of the R186 and the currency, do they mirror one another? Very much so. And um, when you go back to events in December, at the end of February and yesterday. And I think part of the reason is foreigners are very large holders of South African bonds. They own about 32% of um, local currency bonds of the government. So the concern is that as the political risk premium increases, that they could liquidate some of their um, positions as well. Okay, so if they liquidate positions, what happens then? So that basically means that they can sell some of their local currency bonds. For example, they can sell the R186 or longer dated bonds. And then they would, could repatriate their rands back to dollars or to euros. And now if they're selling a bond, it implies that there has to be a buyer somewhere. The buyer may not be prepared to pay it at the current yield and may demand a higher yield for their risk. So that is what then drives the yield? Absolutely. And sometimes when you get like unexpected announcements like yesterday, it's like everyone heads for the exit door. And then that is then one of the major factors that drive this massive volatility because the market then also becomes more illiquid and then the prices just gap in a way. So Rashad, this is the ultimate 
confidence barometer in South Africa. Just take me through a history as best you can, Rashad, at short notice, in terms of when confidence has been good and when confidence has been bad. Just how much volatility do we tend to see in this bond yield? I think as an emerging market, we can't, um, we can't avoid volatility. We have, uh, we have a large current account deficit, which means we need a consistent amount of inflows into the country to fund that. So inflows into the bond market, into the equity market, will just keep that currency at a stable level. If we don't get that, because we ex import more than we export, the currency will naturally depreciate. So we are uh, very de dependent on flows. Uh, the, the, so the volatility we've seen since the crisis uh, yields uh, spiked about 10% in 2008. When we had the post, uh, the QE period post 2008, yields on the SA 10 year got uh, got all the way down to 6%. And they've and and since the tapering in 2013, they've sold off consistently to the 9% level. We were hovering between 850 and 9 until the event of the dismissal of the finance minister. Um, at, at the same time. This is not unusual in an EM context. In, in, in Brazil, rates have spiked three, 400 basis points within months when you have these political events uh, like in, you know, impeachments in, in Brazil, etc. In Turkey, there's a lot of volatility. So as an emerging market, it's something we have to get used to. From a South African perspective, we had maybe a lesser amount of volatility because there was a lot of faith in institutions that being the, the Ministry of Finance and the SOB. And now that these institutions are seemingly under threat, I think we can expect more volatility going forward. Okay, Tisha, now the R186, it affects the rate at which government and public sector entities borrow money. So, for example, Sanrel did a, an oversubscribed bond issuance the other day, very proud of themselves, but they had to pay 11% for that money. Um, it, it was quite a significant premium to even the R186. Is there a correlation between the interest rates that you and I might pay on our debt and the bond market, the, 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 the R186 for argument's sake? That's actually a very good question. Um, so the dynamic basically is what's happening at the moment is that because the political risk premium on our bond yields have increased, and as you pointed out earlier, the rand has fallen sharply. So that then feeds into inflation expectations. And our Reserve Bank's mandate is to combat inflation. So then, by implication, or as a result, they hike the repo rate. Now, in South Africa, our mortgage bond yields are then linked to the repo rate, short um, yeah. dated rates, compared with America, where their mortgage bond yields are priced off the sovereign, the US sovereign right. yield curve. So in a way, what happens is when you look at the slope of the yield curve, the longer you invest, uh, the longer dated bonds you wish to hold, the higher compensation you require for rising inflation. So one can perhaps reason in a way that uh, bond yields tend to lead expectations of where short term interest rates are going. So uh, the implication then is short term interest rates through this year will rise not once, not twice, but possibly three times? That's unfortunately the, the case at the mm. moment. And also your, your bond yields, as we pointed out, is also a currency risk premium involved mm. as well. So if one then thinks that or the risk is that EM foreign exchange rates can fall further, you know, that will also be embedded in the risk okay. premium. Uh, Rashad, to you, um, everyone's talking about the downgrade has become part of our lexicon, a bit like KFC and, um, and sundowns, for example, become part of everyday talk. Um, downgrade has become part of the South African patois, if you like. What happens if we do get Moody's downgrading in line then with Standard & Poor's and Fitch and we go beyond June and suddenly we look towards a December downgrade of our credit rating to junk. What happens to bond rates then? Yeah, I think, I mean, if you look at, if you listen to the media, I mean, even the DJs on the radio are talking about downgrade. So it's, it's very much part of the public, uh, the public talk at this time. And I think that's quite a positive. If you look at other countries, uh, for, example, for example, Brazil, Oh, we lo we're losing Rashad. Let's leave Rashad. Thank you, Rashad, in Cape Town. Let's leave you there. Um, explain to me then what it is, Tisha, in terms of we get the downgrade. What occurs if downgrade happens to the bond market? So, Bruce, perhaps we must just compare the various ratings of the agencies, which are quite important. Um, in the past, Moody's has adopted a slightly more positive outlook on South Africa. So, they 
credit rating has been a notch or two higher than S&P. Then when you look at the ratings, you get a foreign currency rating and you get a local currency rating. Mm -hmm. And many international investors then are mandated, for example, they can only invest in local currency bonds, which has an investment grade rating. Now, South Africa is also part of the so-called Citibank Global Bond yes. Index. So tracker funds then invest in our bonds if they want to be like weight, overweight or underweight in terms of that, so that index. So the risk for us is then what happens to the local currency bond rating because that will be influenced by the very large holdings of foreigners of our local currency bonds. So if Moody's hypothetically downgrades South Africa, our local currency um, rating will remain investment grade. Okay, so the immediate risk then of the sell-off is not that high because the market tends to price in okay. events. However, I think what will be then important is what kind of outlook they attach to, to the rating because that will obviously influence perceptions going forward. Okay, but how bad can it get is my point. Do we see the R186 R1, R1 blow out to 12? Do we see it go to 13 or 14 percent? Where does it go? You know, I guess it's, it's not impossible. When I speak to our bond trader, I mean, they see the risk of 1060 again. So it's always in the context of what can happen. Because if there's, um, and that is the underlying concern, is that the fiscal prudency may not be adhered to if there's a change in, in the Minister of Finance. And from that perspective, you know, bond yields can increase. And then another risk is, as Rashad pointed out, we have a very large current account deficit. Yes, we, do. we also have a fairly, fairly substantial budget deficit. So our local investors cannot always absorb the issuance. So foreign players and foreign investors are actually very important to our market. So how attractive do we have to be? Exactly. And do we have to go to 12? Do we have to go to 14 in the event of a downgrade? Pick a number. <laughs> Pick a number, Tosha. Pick a number. I'd say probably around about 1080. Oh, there we go. That's less bad. Less bad than I thought. Not good, but less bad. Tosha Jacobs. Tosha Jacobs from Investor Corporate and Institutional Banking and also joining us via Skype from Cape Town, Rashad Tayo, Portfolio Manager at ABAX Investments. Thank you very much for watching The Moneymakers this evening. More Moneymakers tomorrow. Good night.